Today, I'm taking my cue from Italy, a country that takes home cooking, family and fresh, vibrant flavours extremely seriously. The Italians are brilliantly using good food to bring people together. As well as being delicious, today's dishes are also really quick and easy to make, leaving you more time to sit down and enjoy them with your friends and family. <laughs> Fennel sausage frittata. The exciting thing about frittata is the fact there's no set recipe, because it's basically eggs or whatever else you have left. For me, the secret of a good frittata is in the sausage. Nice hot pan, onions in. Generous on the onions. Heat, nice and high. Season. Fennel seeds to give the onions a really nice flavour. Everyone's used to cooking sausages whole, but it's a really nice way of using them, taking them out of their thin skin. And what we're going to do is crumple all that wonderful spicy fennel sausage into the onions. It's going to release all that flavour a lot quicker. Really important to keep that gas nice and high. And the longer you caramelise the sausage, the more flavour you're going to gain. Six whole eggs. Give the eggs a really good mix. Flat leaf parsley, a staple in Italian cooking. Chop it, quite rough. Some parmesan. It gives a really nice seasoning. Fresh pepper and a little touch of salt. And then get it in there. Mmm. Run your fork through it so when you slice it, no one's complaining they've got less sausage. I'm gonna make it even more Italian by topping it with some buffalo mozzarella. Dry it and then slice it nice and thinly. Twist it. Mozzarella in. And then finally, finish it with that Parmesan cheese. Get the top just as tasty as it is at the bottom. My frittata needs three and a half to four minutes under a red hot grill. To achieve the best results, always ensure your oven or grill are preheated to the perfect temperature. She's ready. This is the thing I love about Italian cooking it's about sharing, but always focusing on the ingredients. Look at that. I mean, it's incredible. A little shake of the pan to make sure it comes out, and then spatula underneath and just leave it. It's light, fluffy, and it smells incredible. And that, for me, is a dream come true. It's amazing how far you can take six eggs and two sausages. Wow. Spicy fennel sausage frittata, my ultimate Italian breakfast. It's a cracking start to the day. My ultimate Italian lunch. I'm cooking scrummy sardines topped with a fragrant gremolata dressing. But first, a deliciously fresh orzo pasta salad. This is one of the hidden delicacies of Italian pasta, orzo. Because 90% of the time, it's always hidden in a soup or a broth or minestrone. And it looks like large grains of rice. But once they absorb that water, they double in size. It's a pasta that needs a lot of help. Season it nicely, a pinch of salt and splash of extra virgin olive oil, fresh bay leaf, into the boiling water. And that bay leaf really helps the flavour of the pasta. Give you a little pan, a turn left and right. That stops any pasta sticking to the bottom. And the secret behind cooking any pasta is having a nice, gentle, rolling boil. And you just have the gas up where the outside of the pan is just rolling, and all that orzo is tumbling over each other gently. Boiling pasta rapidly tends to destroy the outside texture. It doesn't take the marinade or the vinaigrette or the sauce. For the dressing, parmesan. Twist of fresh pepper, the zest of the lemon. Squeeze your lemon in there through your fingers to catch all those seeds. Bring that together with some extra virgin olive oil. Pine nuts taste delicious. Toasting them just elevates them. After eight minutes, my orzo is perfectly al dente. Drain it, a little bit of cold water through it. Slows the cooking process down, but stops it from going mushy. It's the size of pumpkin seeds now. A drizzle of olive oil and into the vinaigrette whilst it's still warm. Just above room temperature. Because the warmer the pasta, the more it absorbs the vinaigrette. And now, some texture. Rocket, not finely chopped. And the fresh basil as well. Roll them up like a big fat cigar. Slice in half, and then chop the basil. For crunch. Just sprinkle the toasted pine nuts. It looks like a plate of jewels. 
listens. It's a delicious, very fragrant orzo pasta salad. Now, the sardines. Incredibly healthy and absolutely delicious grilled. Never ever be intimidated on looking for fresh fish. It's about the condition of the fish. Bright eyes, fresh gills, nice bright red interior and the firmness of the flesh. Almost you could stand the fish up on its own. It needs to be that fresh. The best way to get flavour into a sardine is to grill it. Light seasoning. Olive oil. And just roll the seasoning around. Get your rosemary. Peel off a few of the little shards at the end so it's a little bit sharp. Push the rosemary in, almost like you're threading. Makes them so much more flavoursome. Never be scared of those fine little bones. I remember growing up with sardines, tin sardines. You didn't turn your nose up at the bone. Once the griddle pan starts to smoke, lightly drizzle, and then sardines on. Two and a half to three minutes each side. Now for the gremolata. A vinaigrette that sits beautifully well on the sardines. Freshly parsley, just run the knife once. Nothing worse when you over chop parsley and all that delicious flavour is left on the board. The zest and juice of an orange and a lemon. Just gonna turn them now. Gremolata is about fragrance, natural flavours. Brilliant for grilled meats as well. A little touch of salt and pepper. And then olive oil, just to bring it together. The garlic, I almost want to be like a secret weapon in there. Grate it. Bring that together. And you've got a very fresh, clean gremolata. Almost if we're sat on the Amalfi Coast. Off. And then whilst the sardines are still nice and warm, and just thinly coat the gremolata. I'd like the parsley and the garlic to sit on top, and that citrus from the lemon and the orange to sort of dive underneath. You can see why Italian cuisine rides on the freshest and the simplest execution. They allow their ingredients to become the hero, not the chef. Also salad with stunning grilled sardines. Wherever you eat this dish, it will fill your senses with the sun and the sea of the Mediterranean. Delicious. We're hoping to wow the family with an amazing quick fig jam crostini with creamy burrata and a hearty main of beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. Beef cheeks. Just think the size of your little cheeks, yeah? Imagine the size of a cow with them. And the cheek is right underneath here, yeah? Mm. I want you to give them a really nice season with okay, salt and pepper cool. on there, please. So, beef cheeks, very cheap. A cut that takes sort of a long time to cook. Yeah. But give it a bit of love, let it cook in the oven. Mm -hmm. It comes out like That's a dream. It. A little touch of oil in the pan. What we want to do is get them really nicely coloured. Seared. Seared. Into the pan. Oh, cool. Uh -huh. Lay away. See what that is? Um... Sitting at the dock of the... the beach. Bay. <laughs> Bay. <laughs> beach! And then I want the onion chunky, because we're going to cook yeah. it for, like, three, three and a half hours. So you go down, 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 and then again there and there. So it doesn't overcook. So a really good colour on the cheeks, like that. So right. how do you cook these at a restaurant if they take so long? They go in the oven, literally half past six, seven o'clock in the morning, three and a half, four hours to be ready for lunch. Mm. And the longer you leave them in their juices yeah. and the cooking liquor, the better. Three nice cloves of garlic. Good. Onions in and garlic in, please. Nice. Where's your baby? There oh, it is. Nice. Good. Get those onions and that garlic really nicely coloured. Put the cheeks back in, please. Right, red wine in. Cool. Okay, and the red wine is going to deglaze the pan. So deglaze will basically sort of rinse all that flavour off the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Okay, because that's going to make the most amazing sauce. Now you could use tomato puree, mm -hmm. but chopped canned tomatoes, it'll make a much better sauce. I'm going to top that with some stock. So the secret of braising is having little of the meat exposed and 90% of it submerged. See them there? Yeah. They're like little crocodile heads popping up out of the water. Turn the gas off and leave the lid just off at the end there. If we had to cover it completely, the steam hits the top yeah. of the lid and all that water comes running back like down. Like a solar still. That's right. In the oven, 140, 150, 
for about three and a half to four hours. Good job. Boom. We're going to now do the fig and burrata crostini. Oh. OK? Let's take the figs. We're going to make a nice, slightly spicy fig jam. Take off the tops. Yeah. In half, and each half into three. Sugar. The touch of salt in there. OK? We're making a jam, but we don't want it to be too sweet. And then these little babies. What are they? Ah. Oh, What's the shape? Stars. Star anise. Star anise? Taken from the aniseed plant. Yeah. And when you dry them like that, it so intensifies the flavour. Really important to count how many we put in there, OK? Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. So they're just there for flavour and then you take them sure. out. That's right. Secret here is to get that caramel going. So when I hear of jam, I don't think of caramel. No, but this is a very fast jam. Caramel's starting to colour. I want you very carefully to drop the figs in there. Good. So the juice out of the figs is starting to break down the caramel. You know what Sorry. that is? Oh, sweet vinegar. I love that on my salad. You've got that sort of sweet and sour flavour. Leave that cooking for three or four minutes. Now let's slice our chipata. In Italian, crostini means little bits of toast. But it can be made out of leftover baguette, sourdough, or any crusty, open textured bread. We're staying authentically Italian with chipata. Season them and then drizzle a little touch of olive oil on there. Both sides are really important because we're going to grill the bread. Push it down. Puts a lovely Very taste. Very lovely. Take it off. With the chipata toasted, we need to carefully extract the star anise pods from our piping hot fig jam. My right, Jack, we've got one little bugger to find. Oh, no. Go. Is it there? Yes, it is. Right. Now we've got the green light to crush. So all the skin's disintegrated in that caramel. That looks so nice. While Jack carefully spreads the crostini with our hot fig jam, I can unveil the last element to our starter, the creamy Italian speciality, burrata. Our oh, little money bags. Wow. Looking delicious. This looks fun. Doesn't it? We need to season them lightly, drizzle over a little olive oil and dust them with lemon zest. Can you imagine that? Sat there. And you tear some of that off and you stick it on top of that and... Mmm. Mm. 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 Back to the main course. To match our hearty beef cheeks, I've chosen to use pappardelle. Rule number one when cooking pasta? Salt in first. Salt in first, good. Olive oil in, pasta in. Twist it round so you don't break it. Nice. Bring that back up the bowl. That's going to take about three or four minutes. Flat leaf parsley. Scrunch it up for me. Yep. And chop it. Now, wait to see oh, these wow. beef cheeks. Beauties. Mm, Look at them. Wow. They're really Look. soft. They're oh, very they're soft. Tiny. I want you to taste. Mmm. They're so good. Oh, Jack, you've just dribbled on your jumper. Joking. <laughs> really? Right, drain the pasta. Salt, pepper, the pasta. A little drizzle of olive oil. And I want you to put your fresh pasta. Nicely chopped. Nicely chopped. In. This is the magic bit, OK? You take a little ladle of the juice, put that at the bottom, and you put the pasta Top of that sauce. Ooh. Ooh. Honestly. Oh my gosh. Your sisters are gonna love you even more now, you know that. Uh, what about when you cook this for your girlfriend one day? Uh, Just right. tell her where you got the recipe from, will you? Promise? Promise. I don't want you stealing Daddy's thunder. One beautiful jaw on there. Two beautiful jaws on there. And then the third jaw. And then you go over with the sauce. How cool is that? Delicious. You've got the burrata, and I've got the cheese. Mm. Let's go, baby. Stop <laughs> Don't be cheeky. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> My ultimate Italian dinner. Quick fig jam crostini with creamy burrata. A main course of slow-cooked beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. A stunning meal to bring the whole family together in the best Italian tradition.